Hey everyone, Joe from Multi-Sport Mindset. Today I'm going to show you the type of backhand plays you should be practicing so you practice how you want to play and make more outs in a game. The goal of this video is to help you make routine backhand plays look easy and difficult backhand plays look routine. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'll compete in a backhand fielding challenge where if I fail, I will spin around about 15 times and Coach Orv will relentlessly peg me with eggs until I cross that finish line. To make routine backhand plays look easy and difficult backhand plays look routine, you need to understand when to use backhand plays, why they will help you become a better infielder, the proper mindset to implement when performing backhands, the proper backhand technique, and the types of backhand plays you should practice so you can execute them in a game. The goal of infielding is to get outs. Infielders need to understand that only two out of every 10 balls will be hit at you. That means that 40% of the plays will be to your forehand and 40% of the plays will be to your backhand. And for those 80% of balls not hit right to you, you're gonna have to move and make some one-handed plays. Backhand plays should be made on any ball to the right of you at shortstop where the backhand gives you the best chance to get the out. A lot of coaches will say to get behind the ball, which creates a lot of tabletop hockey goalies or crabs which is not what we want. We want to be dynamic infielders that attack the ball and pick our hop. We want to create angles that get us to the ball faster, shorten the distance to first, and enable us to get rid of the ball quickly. Plus, as a shortstop on balls right at us, we want to field the ball just to the left of our center when we square up. Balls to our right, when we try to get behind them, they put us in a poor position to watch the ball into our glove. If my hand is here, I can see it. If it starts to get here, I, I can no longer see that final hop. We want to make a quality transfer and get into a strong throwing position. If I'm here, boom, boom, I'm symmetrical. If I end up on the right side of my body, when I go right, left, I'm in a poor throwing position. We want to have proper footwork. If I'm here and I try and rush it, I don't have that ball in my hand yet, my feet are out of sync, I might make a bad throw. And the final thing, the ball's going to skip past us. If I'm here and the ball hits me, it's going to shoot off into left field. If I'm here on that ball at me, it hits me and drops to my feet. The backhand solves all these problems. Now, on a ball that's hit to my right, instead of trying to awkwardly move over to get behind it, I can sprint in on a diagonal, pick my hop, shorten the distance to first, and field it as a backhand. Also, when that ball bounces up, because I'm right behind it, if it comes up, it'll hit me in the chest, allowing me to pick it up and still make my strong, accurate throw. Because I'm in a backhand position, now I can make sure that the ball's in the center of my body, I can see it out front of my eyes, I can rake through it, I can perform a proper transfer, proper footwork, and make that strong, accurate throw. The mindset has three parts. The first part being you need to know that the ultimate goal of making backhand infield plays is to get the out. The second part, you need to know the situation. And the third part is you need the four second mindset. Knowing the situation before the ball is pitched enables you to be in the right spot at the right time to do your job. You have to ask yourself, what do I do if the ball's hit to me? What do I do if the ball's not hit to me? To keep things simple, before the pitch, you need to know the number of outs and where the base runners are. As you advance in your career, the score, the inning, the count, the pitcher, the batter, your teammates' strengths and weaknesses and your strengths and weaknesses will dictate what decision you will make and will assist you in getting the out. The best defenders are also the best decision makers. The right mindset that ensures you take purposeful focused reps that translate to outs in games is the four second mindset. I've already made a video dedicated to this specific topic, so check it out here to take your infield practice to the next level. Proper backhand technique requires the understanding of your positioning for routine backhand plays, on the run backhand plays forwards and laterally, and then sliding and diving backhand plays. To perform a routine backhand play, we want to be in a relatively square position with our ankle, knee, and shoulder in a vertical line behind the ball. My ankle bone should be in a straight line to the incoming ball, so much so that if I wasn't to feel the ball, that ball would hit right off my ankle bone. My head is in the center of my body and my glove is out front of my eyes. I want to rake through the incoming ball, pick it, transfer it, and perform the universal right foot, left foot throw footwork. For a video dedicated to the universal footwork, check out this video here. It's the most important footwork for any position on the baseball field. To perform a backhand on the run, we need to know that there are two types, forwards and lateral. To perform the forwards version, we want to sprint at the ball, have our left leg forwards, we present our glove inside of our left foot, out front of our eyes, we rake through the ball, transfer it, and we throw off of our right foot. To perform the lateral 
backhand on the run. We wanna have our left foot forwards, but this time it's going to be on the inside or closer to home plate side of our foot. So we have our glove down out front of our eyes, we rake through the ball back in the direction that it came from, and we throw off of our right foot. For both of these backhands on the run, we field the ball while running, throw the ball while running, and we continue running after the play is made, never setting our feet throughout either of the plays. To perform diving and sliding backhand plays, you just have to commit to the dive or the slide. If you're interested in learning how to dive and slide in a safe progression that maximizes your reps, check out this video here. I do encourage you when learning to dive and slide to do it on grass, maybe wet the grass down a little bit or do it on turf and always wear pants to practice so you can practice the dives and slides so you can make them in a game. If you don't practice it, it's not gonna happen. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to Multisport Mindset so you don't miss out on future content that will help you fill in your backhand gaps, such as drills starting from simple to hard to master backhands, drills starting from simple to hard to master diving and sliding so you can implement it on your backhand plays, and then finally throwing on the run progression so you can use it during your catch play so when it comes time to make those throws on the run, you nail it in the game. All right, now we're onto the timer where I have to make five backhand plays within a 60 second time limit with the caveat being that I need to hit the target and I need to get the ball to hit that target in under four seconds or less. Where if I fail, I will spin around the bat 15 times and Coach Orr will ruthlessly pelt me with eggs until I make it past the finish line. Let's get after it. Three, two, one, go. Well, there you have it. I nailed the five backhands in under a minute. I had time for more, but I was gas. So, nailed it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to Multisport Mindset. Thankfully, I don't have to do the challenge. But if you have a challenge with the consequence that you'd like to see me perform in the future, put it in the comments below and I'll get to it.